Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement sessions in your PHP application. So in a previous video, I showed a brief overview of what you need to do to make sessions work. In this video, I'm going to show you how to actually use them to do something, which is probably the more valuable skill. So I'm starting looking at this application right here. Uh, I wrote this entire application in a playlist entitled something about logging in, securing your application. So if you're wondering where any of this came from, there's a video on the whole thing. So basically this is a site, it's got a registration page, it's got a login page, it's got a logout page, which we haven't looked at yet. I'm telling you, I've created some users. And so as things stand, my login page, right, you put in some credentials and they're either right or they're wrong. But not much happens outside of that. You get a little fail message or a success message. Now you don't log in just to generate a simple message like fail or success. Instead, what you would want to do is have restricted access to other parts of the site, right? So the ability to remember that you got that password correct. So let me show you how to do that. So here's my login page. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff here already. Um, I did cover the entire thing. So this has sessions implemented in it already. So basically there's only two things I had to add to this. And so the one is on line one, well not line one, but line two. First thing I do inside of my PHP block is I call that session start function, right? That function right there, session underscore start. You have to call that on any page which you can use session data. Now the other part of this was just, I kind of know my code. This little if block here is more or less what determines whether your password and username were correct. So specifically this little set of curly braces right here, that's what determines whether you were successful. So it's a success. And if you want to create some session data like I did, you're using a super global and it's called dollar sign underscore session. And then in the square brackets, you can call these variables, whatever you want to call them. I don't know what you'd want to store, probably just like a username or maybe some kind of a flag indicating that they are logged in. But basically I created, I decided to call my variable user and I set it equal to uname. And uname is the thing that they submitted off of the form. My idea being if your new uname and password combination works, then your username is uname. All right, so I'm creating sessions, but I'm not doing anything with them. I didn't put in a correct password. I'm gonna put in a correct password now. And so we'll do this, because I know this is correct, and I get a success, but let's do something with it. So what I wanna do specifically is, it doesn't really make sense to display this form if they're logged in. If you think about how it works, uh, there's a login page where you're not logged in yet and a logout page which would end your information. So I want this thing to only happen in the event that the user is not logged in. So if I want to do that, I'm going to jump into PHP, just a little tiny block up here, and I'll have a little if, so say if, is set uh, dollar sign underscore session, name of that variable was user, and I need an extra parenthesis there. So if that thing is set, then I'm going to echo out a little message and it'll say something like hello. And then uh, the name of that session variable is that. That's kind of the recipe. This is an array. Every time you want to print out an array, you need to wrap it in either curly braces or just do good old fashioned concatenation. So that right there is saying, hey, if you are logged in, then spit out that little message. Otherwise, now you might not like how this looks. So I'm, it's like a hanging curly brace. So that curly brace opens here, and I want it to close right there. So it runs from there to there. If you've never seen that technique before, it's a legitimate technique. It's better than a giant echo, which may or may not work the way you want it to work. So if you're logged in, greet them. Otherwise, display the form. So remember, I did log in correctly last time. So if I refresh this, let's see what I get. And I get, hello, Ken, success, right? It looks kind of ugly. I didn't mean to do that, but it happened. And then my form's not there. Now, one of the problems with doing sessions is this is a pretty elaborate thing to do. I guess let me put a line break on this before I proceed. Now, one of the problems with working with sessions is this is just isn't that difficult. There's this part, session start recognize the place where you want to in your code where you want to create the variable or variables do it and then do something with it but the problem is that session data sticks so what i mean by that is if i go to the register page and i go back to the login page like you can't test the login page anymore 
because the login page is detecting that the session was there. And that's what sessions are all about. Notice I navigated away from the page, came back to the page, information is still saved. So you pretty much have to create a logout as well. And so that's just one of the things that you realize when you start messing around with sessions, is once you get that data there, getting rid of it actually proves to be a bit of a challenge. And so you have to go to the logout page, the logout page gets rid of the session, then you can go back to the login page. And so notice that information comes and goes, based upon whether the session uh, data is there. So let me show you real quick how to destroy, it, how to destroy the data. Um, so literally it is those three lines right there. I thought about making a whole video about this, but I thought it would be kind of weird. So here it is. So session start, that's the rule, right? If you want to work with session data, you got to call that session start function. This right here is kind of weird to say what it's doing. Well, basically that session super global is an array of information. And so you're saying, hey, set that session to a new empty array. So that just kills all of the session variables individually. And this cleans up the session. Um, if you want to go more in depth on this, there are people that there's there's ways to do a little better with this because there's this other issue happening in the background with cookies and such, and so you can do a little bit more to clean up your sessions. But this should meet your needs. You can get a little uh, you can go a little further with this, but it kind of doesn't fit a YouTube video so well at that point. So in this video. I showed you yet again for a second time how to implement a session and something that you could do with it, and I also co covered how to destroy them. So right, it's, we're not talking about a whole lot of, a lot of code here. This information is essential when your website starts to get more functional. So you might need these at some point, and if you do, now you know how to create and destroy sessions. Thanks for watching.